In this lecture, today we will discuss about Carl Palmonel. So Carl Palmonel is also referred as the pulmonary heart disease. Uh, it is defined as the altered RV structure or function in context of the chronic lung disease. Uh, it is usually triggered by the presence of pulmonary hypertension. And if there is um, RV dysfunction due to left-sided heart failure, then it is not considered as Carl Palmonel. Basically, 50% of the cases uh, are due to COPD or chronic bronchitis. However, the prevalence is very difficult to ascertain because not all patients with lung disease will develop core pulmonary. Uh, etiology can be broadly classified into three groups. Uh, core pulmonary basically occurs either due to parenchymal lung diseases or due to the uh, diseases of the pulmonary vessels or due to the chronic alveolar hypoxia. Um, these of the long parenchyma, which are responsible for the development of the core pulmonary, include uh, diseases like COPD, interstitial lung disease, similarly the presence of the combined pulmonary fibrosis and emphysema, as well as bronchitis, pulmonary Langerhans cells, histiocytosis, and other development of lung disorders. Uh, similarly, the chronic alveolar hypoxia is also an important cause of core pulmonary, and the disease which causes uh, which cause chronic alveolar hypoxia include alveolar hypoventilation syndrome like obesity hypoventilation syndrome or central hypoventilation syndrome, neuromuscular respiratory failure, and even the chest for disorders like kyphoscol uh, scoliosis are responsible for core pulmonary. And also the patient who live in the higher altitude for the long time can also develop the core pulmonary due to the chronic alveolar hypoxia. Uh, as well as the disease of the pulmonary vasculature are also responsible for the core pulmonary. Um, they might be uh, pulmonary arterial hypertension, which might be idiopathic or due to the other drugs or toxins. As well as the presence of the chronic thromboembolic pulmonary hypertension will lead to the changes in the pulmonary vasculature that in, uh, later increases the pulmonary artery hypertension and it causes the core pulmonary. Similarly, the pulmonary tumor with the uh, thrombotic microangiopathy as well as the mediastinal disorders affecting the central pulmonary vasculature can cause the core pulmonary. So the basic mechanism behind the development of the core pulmonary is the presence of the pulmonary hypertension. When there is increase in when there is pulmonary hypertension, uh, there is increased uh, RV afterload, and this increased RV afterload uh, in the long term can alter the RV structure, causing the dilatation with or without hypertrophy of the right ventricle, leading to the core pulmonary. So when there is uh, parenchymal lung disease or when there is pulmonary vascular disorders, as well as when there is chronic uh, alveolar hypoxia, this will lead to the pulmonary uh, circular bed, uh, vascular remodeling, vasoconstriction, and the destruction. Uh, this eventually leads to the increase in the pulmonary artery pressure and the increase in the right ventricular afterload. When there is increase in the right ventricular afterload, then the right ventricular uh, dysfunction ensues, leading to either hypertrophy as well as the, uh, the dilatation of the uh, right ventricle, leading to ultimately leading to the failure of the right ventricle, which is also known as core pulmonary. So this is the basic uh, pathophysiology and the mechanism behind the core pulmonary. And the patient can present in the various ways. They might present as the acute uh, core pulmonary or as a chronic core pulmonary, or some patient can even present as the acute decompensation of the chronic core pulmonary. Acute core pulmonary, it usually occurs uh, after the sudden and the severe stimulus like massive pulmonary embolus, and it leads to the sudden RV dilatation and failure without uh, the evidence of the right ventricular hypertrophy because there is no time for the right ventricle to compensate and to hypertrophy, get hypertrophied. Similarly, in the cases of the core, uh, chronic core pulmonary, uh, it develops very slowly and there will be the presence of the compensatory right ventricular hypertrophy followed by the right ventricular dilatation and the failure. Uh, where this acute decompensation of the chronic core pulmonary is usually triggered by the worsen hypoxia from any causes like uh, pneumonia or due to the uh, acidemia or due to the acute pulmonary embolus, arterial tachyarrhythmias, hypervolemia, and the mechanical ventilation. So the clinical manifestation uh, differs according to the underlying cause for the uh, pulmonary, underlying cause for the core pulmonary. Basically, the most common symptom is dyspnea, and there will be the symptoms of the other underlying pulmonary disorders Patient can present with the lower extremity edema as well as the increased abdominal growth due to presence of the ascites because of the right heart failure. Signs basically, we'll find the signs of the pulmonary hypertension. Uh, Ascultative findings related to the underlying lung disease can be present. Like if the patient has COPD, there can be the wheezing, uh, can be present. So 
ulcer related findings will be based on the underlying lung disease patient can have the murmur of the tricuspid regurgitation which is a pan systolic murmur similarly there can be the right sided s3 gallop there can be the right ventricular heave which is palpable along the left sternal border as well there can be the uh, signs of the right high right sided um, filling pressures of the hyperpolemia like elevated jvp with prominent uh, v waves which is suggestive of the tricuspid regurgitation presence of the congestive hepatomegaly pulsatile liver ascites and the lower extremity edema can be present similarly in the later stage when there is a, a low cardiac output associated with the cystic vasoconstriction or the hypoxia there can be also the presence of the cyanosis diagnosis is made uh, when made after uh, ex excluding the causes of the left heart failure if there is presence of or the evidence of the left heart failure we cannot uh, diagnose those patients as having cord pulmonary we need to rule out uh, right ventricular systolic and diastolic dysfunction before making the diagnosis of the cord pulmonary so when there is um, when left ventricle is uh, working properly and if there is the features of the uh, right heart failure then we consider it a cord pulmonary in the for the diagnosis ecg can be useful in ecg we can see p pulmonary right axis deviation or the rv hypertrophy over this uh, uh, ecg changes are not not specific for the not specific for the diagnosis of cord pulmonary in the x ray we can also look for the enlargement of the pulmonary arteries enlargement of the hilar vessels as well as uh, <clears throat> we can uh, in the lateral x ray we can see the decrease in the retrostromal space due to uh, enlargement of the right ventricle as shown in this x ray similarly as shown in this x ray you can see enlargement of the pulmonary arteries and the hilar vessels <clears throat> spirometry and the lung volume analysis can also help us to identify the cause uh, spirometry may show the obstructive or the restrictive type of the defect which will help us to identify the underlying cause for the core pulmonary we can also identify the reduced uh, diffusing capacity by using this uh, spirometry and the lung volume studies similarly avg will show hypoxia with or without uh, the presence of the hypercapnia for example in case of the copd there can be the presence of hypercapnia as well as in cases of a chronic thromboembolism there can be the presence of the hypoxia in the avg similarly if uh, we are not able to make the diagnosis properly we can also uh, order for the high resolution ct of the chest because it will help us to identify the other causes like interstitial lung disease and it will also helps to it also helps to quantify the extent of the emphysema other investigations which can be useful include uh, chest ct angiogram uh, it is useful in cases of the acute pulmonary embolism and we can also perform ventilation perfusion scan in case of the chronic thromboembolic diseases as well as echo 2d echo is also an important investigation because it will help us to um, measure the right ventricular wall thickness chamber dimensions as well as it will also show the intraventricular septal movement during the systole as well as we can assess the pulmonary artery pressure and we can also measure the various parameters which will reflect the function of the right ventricle like um, tapse as well as the systolic uh, velocity of the rv free wall and the t index and the next invasive uh, investigation which can be done is the cardiac catheterization it will uh, confirm the presence of the pulmonary hypertension and it will exclude the elevated left sided pressure so it can be useful investigation in certain cases similarly bnp and anti uh, anti pro bnp can be measured because uh, when there is stretching and the failing, you know, stretching of the right ventricle uh, these uh, uh level of these are, can be increased so for the management of the core pulmonary uh, we need to manage the underlying disease and we have to manage the symptoms of the right heart failure so in cases of the acute core pulmonary usually patient will have the decreased cardiac output there will be for, uh, hemodynamic compromise so fluid loading is important similarly use of the vasoconstrictors like epinephrine is necessary when the patient is in the cardiogenic shock and then we have to correct the underlying cause like if there is massive embolism we might need uh, to use the thrombolytic agent or we might even need the uh, we need to perform the catheter guided or the surgical embolectomy might be needed next important treatment for the core pulmonary is oxygen therapy this oxygen therapy it relieves hypoxemic pulmonary vasoconstriction it improves the cardiac output it lessens the sympathetic vasoconstriction uh and improves the renal perfusion as well as elevates the tissue hypoxemia so it is one of the very important aspect 
of the management of the core pulmonary. So every patient with a core pulmonary should be assessed and should be prescribed the long-term domiciliary oxygen therapy. For the symptomatic management to reduce the congestion of the right ventricle, we can use the diuretics. Similarly, in certain cases in which the pathogenesis is basically due to the pulmonary vasoconstriction, like in cases of the uh, idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, we can use the vasodilator agents like calcium channel blockers, as well as prostaglandin analogs and the prostaglandin receptor agonists like ipoprostenol, triprostenil, selexipac. These all drugs will vasodilate the pulmonary vasculature. So that will they will be helpful in the certain cases, idiopathic cases of the idiopathic pulmonary hypertension. However, these drugs are not useful in the core pulmonary secondary to other uh, causes like COPD or chronic thromboembolism. And there is also next group of drug which can be used in the idiopathic pulmonary hypertension. They are the endothelial receptor antagonist. These include the drugs like bosentan, mesentan, amrisentan. These all these drugs uh, they antagonize the endothelin and cause the pulmonary uh, vasodilators. So basically, these are also the vasodilators. Similarly, phosphodiesterase five inhibitors uh, like sildenafil, tadalafil, as well as the uh, vardenafil can be used. Uh, these are also approved for the treatment of the pulmonary artery hypertension, and they enhance the nitric oxide mediated vasodilatation. So, see so all these vasodilator drugs are basically used for the idiopathic causes of the pulmonary artery hypertension, or in the other some cases only, but not for the cases related to COPD or chronic bronchitis. Uh, these are also the newer group of the drug, vernal cyclic stimulants. Um, they also basically enhance the function of the nitric oxide and act synergistically with the nitric oxide to enhance the vasodilatation. These are also approved for the group 1 and group 4 uh, pulmonary hypertension, but they are not uh, used for the every cases of the core pulmonary. These vasodilator drugs are only used for the selected patients. So we have to be very careful while diagnosing the patient and classifying the underlying cause and using the treatment for the core pulmonary. However, the symptomatic management, diuretics, and the supportive treatment for the uh, right-sided heart failure is same for the all causes of the core pulmonary. Other drugs which can be used and which are being studied include the cardiac glycosides. They usually improve the may improve the RV function, but they can also cause the hypoxia. So this should be avoided in the acute cases. And their use in the core pulmonary is controversial. Uh, in cases of the uh, underlying thromboembolic events or the pulmonary artery hypertension, we can even use oral anticoagulants like warfarin uh, for the treatment. Similarly, theophylline or the methyl xanthines, and this can be useful in cases of the core pulmonary secondary to COPD because this will these drugs they improve the myocardial contractility, they have the pulmonary uh, vasodilatory effect, and they also enhance the diaphragmatic contractility. As well as in the COPD patient, it also improves the nighttime oxygenation. Although these drugs have the narrow therapeutic index in the selected patients, these drugs can be used for the management of the core pulmonary. So if medical treatment is uh, not adequate or the patient is not responding properly or if the patient has side effects related to the drugs, in some cases, surgical treatment might be needed. Like phlebotomy can be performed in cases of a severe polycythemia. If the hematocrit is more than 65% or more, uh, in those cases, the phlebotomy is indicated. Uh, this phlebotomy decreases the mean pulmonary artery pressure, decreases the mean pulmonary vascular resistance, and also improves the exercise performance. And the other surgical treatment, which can be used for the selected patient, include the surgical embolectomy for the uh, massive thromboembolism, or the, we can also use catheter embolectomy for the selected cases. And ultimately, patient might require single lung, double lung, or the heart and lung transplantation for the treatment of the so, call Paul Monel. So, thank you very much.